Hi, welcome for our online training sessions. In this session, we are going to discuss what is PLSQL and why we required this PLSQL and what are different blocks we have in PLSQL and out of that, what are optional and what are mandate and that we are going to discuss and then we, are, we will have a simple PLSQL program how we can go for execute, okay? So PLSQL is basically, it's a procedural language, which is extension for SQL. It's a procedural language extension for SQL. We know that SQL is a structural query language. When we have a data in the database, in Oracle database tables, if we want to pull the data from database tables, or if we want to update the existing records, which are available in the database table, if we want to delete the data, from the database tables, then we will be using SQL. But SQL where we are going to apply the commands, but we cannot go for uh, applying the procedural statements. Procedural statements we cannot apply. It's a structural query language where we will give some input command and we'll get an output. But when you would like to go for apply some logic, when you want to manage the data processing, then we will be going ahead with the PLSQL language. Okay, it's a, it's a block structured language we are going to have. PLSQL is a block structured language that can have multiple blocks in it. So block is nothing but a group of statements which we are going to write and execute, right? So the block is going to have multiple statements which will be executed in the sequence order, okay? So whenever we are developing the PLSQL block, we can completely use all our SQL statements and we can go for manipulate the data. For example, we have some customer's data in the database, customer's table. We would like to pull the data and validate each and every customer record. Then we will go for use this uh, PLSQL uh, where we will have a different concepts like concepts and all we'll be discussing about that. It allows declaration of constants and variables and procedures and functions and also different types of triggers we are going to have. So we'll be using all these uh, options in our PLSQL where we are going to have the declaration of variables and triggers and also the procedural and functions. This We can apply the conditions like uh, if else condition and also we can go for apply the loops. Loop is basically if you want to execute the same statements multiple times, then we'll go for loops. Conditional, conditional based means based on some condition. If the condition is true, we want to execute some statements. If the condition is false, we wanted to execute some other statements, then we will go with the conditions. Right, so that and all we are going to discuss in our next slide. So inside of PLSQL, when we are working with the procedure functions packages, the advantage of this use, which is reusable. For example, we are going to write some logic. I want to use this logic in multiple programs. Then we will make that particular logic as a procedure or function or package so that we don't need to write this logic again in another program. We can directly call that procedure or function or package or trigger direct. Okay, so this is how it's going to work here. Okay. So these are major advantages uh, of the PLSQL. And when we are working with PLSQL, we have mainly four sections. The blocks are three, but four sections. One is header section, declaration, execution, and exception. We can also call it as a declaration block, executable block, and exception block, and exception block. In, in a declaration block, we are going to declare the variables, PLSQL tables, cursors, and we can also have some constant values we can go for declaration. Executable block where we are going to write our PLSQL executable statements. We are going to write PLSQL statement executions. Exception is basically to handle the errors. Generally, when we are writing some programs, there will be two different types of errors. One is compilation error. Another one is uh, runtime errors. Compilation error is basically at the time of compiling our program. Let's say I've written some program. I'm just trying to compile the program, whether it's correct or not. Then if there are any syntax errors or any of the variables which are not declared, you are using or any other issues are there that we will get compilation errors. So at the time of compilation, if we get any errors, we are going to rectify 
ourselves as a developer. Once we develop the program successfully, at this point of time, we don't have any issues, then we'll run the program. Okay. When we run the program, the data will be processed in your program, right? Maybe you are taking some input, you are trying to validate the data and trying to generate some output, different options you are trying to do it, right? So in your program, in the runtime, if any error occurs, you want to catch that error. You would like to catch that error and try to do some action. Try to do some action means, for example, you are going to run the end month end program. This month end program is going to find out the complete customer's information, trying to send the statements to customers. Let's say a couple of customers has got some issues. So it's throwing error. So I don't want to exit from the program. I wanted to just send an email and start the next level. Okay. So this type of runtime errors, if you want to go for catch, then we will use the exception block. So exception block is used mainly to catch the error. So by catching the error, what we will do? Okay, error has occurred. Yes, you got the error and you are going to catch that. Then what you will do? Either we will try to write a debug message into the log file saying that someone's error has occurred while performing that. And based on that, we can go for debug the program in the next level. Or sometimes some error occurs, we can send some notification to the corresponding person. So it depends on the requirement, we can take a decision. When we are writing 10 lines of program, 100 lines of program, there won't be an issue. As a developer, you can easily find where exactly the problem is there. But when we have some thousands of lines coding, obviously we are supposed to manage the debug messages and also exception handling in the runtime so that we can easily track and we are supposed to maintain some coding standards also when we are writing some thousands of lines coding in any language, not only in PLSQL, maybe in Java language or Python language or any language we are supposed to take care of this particular activity. So when we talk about PLSQL block, PLSQL blocks, or how many blocks we have? Three blocks. Sections, of course, maybe we can have four sections, header section, declaration, execution, and exception, but mainly we have three blocks. So what are those three blocks? First one is a declaration block or section declaration block where we are going to declare the variables, cursors, PLSQL types, executable block. After begin, we are going to have executable block, then exception block. So out of all these three blocks, one is mandatory, that is executable block. Executable block is mandatory. The remaining all are optional. Declaration block is optional. Exception block is optional. Without, without a declaration block and without exception block, we can write a program and execute it. But without execution block, there is no question of PLSQL program. There is no question of PLSQL program. Okay, so let's enter into the application. We'll try to write a simple uh, PLSQL program. We'll just try to print our company name, our organization name, we'll try to print. That's what we are trying to do. It is, it's very simple. Let me connect to the server. We'll be using either SQL plus, or we can also use some other tools, PLSQL developer, or SQL developer we can use. I'm using the username, password, and uh, host. Okay, so now we can see that we are connecting to Oracle database, the release version. This is our uh, database here. We have a table here, employee table. This is employee table. And I'm trying to select employee number, salary from database table. Now I would like to write a PLSQL program. So better use uh, editor, ED stands for editor. It will open the notepad. It will be flexible to write the code. You can go for execute directly uh, from SQL plus there itself. We can write code and execute, but that will not be that much uh, user friendly compared to notepad or some other. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to write a executable block directly begin. I'm using DBMS underscore output dot put underscore line. And within the single quotation, I'm going to write a message saying that it's a Sodi Corporation USA and go for end. This is our declaration block. Begin and end is required. Obviously, if we start any program, uh, we are supposed to intimate to the server or tell to the server saying that 
this is my beginning of the program and this is what uh, I'm going to execute the statements. And finally, we are going to say that it's going to be closed. So what I'm trying to do is I want to write some information into the output file. So when you want to write some data into the output file, then we have to use the built-in package, built-in PLSQL package. Oracle has provided some built-in packages which will be helpful to use or uh, to make your program is very short. Okay, the first one what we are going to learn is dbms underscore output is one of the package dot put underscore line is one of the procedure. And then if you pass the information in the single quotation that will be printed as it is in the output file. So this is the package name dot this is procedure. What is package? What is procedure? We'll discuss uh, in our next level. And of course, we are going to write our own packages and our own procedures. Okay, at this point of time, you just remember that we are going to use dbms underscore output dot put underscore line. It's a built-in PLSQL package. We are going to use this to write some messages into the output file. Okay, so let's go for exit. Now PLSQL procedure successfully completed. It means your program completed successfully. Your program is completed successfully. But I didn't get any output right here. If you look at, I, I could not see the output. If you if you wanted to see the output, we need to set one SQL star plus command. Set server output on. Set server output on. Okay, now go for execute slash press enter key. Now we can find the output of this program is this Sony Corporation USA. Sony Corporation USA. I would like to display some more statements. ED, ED stands for editor and you can go for copy paste this. I'm going to display my company name and address here. Los Angeles. And then I'm going to specify the company rate. And then yeah. like this, we can go for use uh, multiple uh, times and then go for execute. Now we can see that the data is displayed. Actually, displaying the data is a very simple process in PLSQL. It's not that we are writing program to display the data. Basically, program is nothing but a logic formula you are going to apply. Every client will have different logic, different business process, right? We cannot say that every client will follow the same business rules, same calculation, same formulas. Everybody will have their own logic, their own business process. According to their requirement, we are supposed to write a program, right? We are supposed to write a program. In this program, we are just trying to learn the basic thing, how to write an information into the output file. Here we can see that dbms underscore output dot put underscore line is one of the PLSQL statement I have used. This same statement I have displayed multiple times. Multiple times we can go for use. Okay. Now we will go for the second section. This is our first program. In our next session, we'll go for the second, second program, how to declare the variables. Thank you.